the honest truth is the faster you can pivot, the faster you can move, the faster you can change your marketing message to, you know, hey, here's the, here's an opportunity. Here's how you can make it so you survive. Here's how, you, so think about it this way. P- people always talk about, especially in this online space, you know, um, you know, freedom in life. Well, right now we're going back where we're going down a level on the hierarchy of needs to security. Mm-hmm. So instead of freedom, what you're selling security, financial security versus financial freedom. So in all the market messages, the offers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're changing, you're changing the way that, and you're changing the way that people think people are not thinking the next two years. They're now thinking the next 30 to 90 days. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. All right, let's do this. Uh, what are we doing? We're talking to our buddy. Oh, we are? Yeah, this is actually a fun conversation. Yeah. it's uh, We're talking to our buddy. I'm talking to my buddy. Yeah. That's you. What, that's what we do for a living is we talk to our buddies. It's pretty cool. It's pretty <laughs> sweet living. <laughs> and some reason people hang with us, but I guess it's kind of a smidgen interesting. Yeah. But yes, today we have another buddy with us. Mm-hmm. A new buddy you haven't seen on the Hustle and Flow Chart show, but mm-hmm. he has been on your previous show. Yes, I did in- interview him on Authority Insider, I mm-hmm. think somewhere between four and five years ago. Damn. So if you're wondering how long we've been doing this, longer than that. <laughs> yeah, we started, what? 2010 originally all this stuff podcasting but yeah it's been a ways things have evolved but yeah scott oldford is here yes and he's back for i guess technically round two since but it's round one of hustle and flow Chart. let's just call it just he's back yeah but not name any names hard times yeah scott times have changed since that last time you chatted with him too like a lot yeah and he said he didn't want to hear that old interview <laughs> i said it'll be tech to the end of this one don't worry yeah but it won't well probably. so as we record this episode i'm actually going to peek peer behind give you a peek behind the curtain what am i trying to say i don't know i'm gonna give you a peek behind the curtain we're actually recording this on march 12th the day that disneyland shut down yes today is march 12th and today is the day that we found out trafficking inversion summit got postponed Mm -hmm. we found out that disneyland is closed Mm -hmm. it's the day after we found out that the nba has indefinitely postponed its season Mm -hmm. we found out that the ncaa march madness is going to play on without fans in the stadium that is what is going on in the world today <laughs> as we record this so i wanted to give that context because we do talk about that in this episode <laughs> yeah no it's uh it's interesting times and maybe by the time this goes live uh hopefully there's a solution or it's looking better but who yeah. knows but we'll uh this is where we're at now at march 12th yeah we may be so. in quarantine by the time you hear this mm. all locked into our bedrooms <sighs> separately bedrooms. oh geez hope not <laughs> jesus like not even walking. allowed in my kitchen anymore oh my god how the dep- oh, all right let's hope it doesn't go there yeah let's stay positive and be happy for health i'm wiping my butt on the carpet like a dog because nobody can buy toilet paper Dude, anymore how do you keep that microphone so close to your mouth it doesn't even <laughs> sound like you're Hopefully the sound effect is working i can't tell all right so um scott though scott is He just has a wealth of information, a wealth of experience, Mm -hmm. Um, has been a million in debt twice, he said, and has come back quickly as well from these times. And he, uh, I mean, it's just really cool to hear his perspective of that experience and the shifts he's had. But also, of course, we're chatting a lot about the current affairs of Mm -hmm. the world and really how from his perspective and as a business owner and person, you should kind of prepare yourself and act i mean there's there's definitely the fear side of things freak out mode tighten up survival mode and then there's the other side that's opportunity optimistic hey happy i'm healthy and alive yeah and let's do something about this thing man there's always an opportunity so he breaks down his perspective on that in a lot of ways. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's just a fascinating conversation. In fact, uh, I think before we hit record, we almost compared it to like, uh, let's just let's just do a Joe Rogan on yep. this one and see where the conversation goes. Literally, so, that was literally that was the uh, <laughs> right before we recorded. We're like, hey, Scott, what are we going to talk about? You didn't give us anything. And he was like. I don't know. Let's just yeah. hit record. Like, let's just hit record right. and see what comes out. <laughs> and it was a fascinating conversation and it flew by and mm-hmm. we looked at the clock and we went, shit, Crap. we need to get Scott <laughs> off of here because he had a deadline that he needed to meet. So it's all good. Damn we'll it. have so, him back. Well, maybe we'll have him back. You let us know, though, if you want him back. Yeah. Let us know if you enjoy this episode. Let us know in the Facebook group or you can yeah. email us or however you prefer to communicate. Facebook groups preferred. Yeah, um, go to the Facebook group. But uh, <laughs> yeah, flowchartgroup.com is yeah. where you can find the Facebook group. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let us know if you like this episode episode because if you enjoy it scott said he'll come back for more and probably uh schedule a longer time block to chat with
with us. Sure. Uh, we enjoyed the episode, so we want him back. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode <laughs> and want him back as well. Yeah. No, we, we uh, I don't even know where to start with what we touched on, but really there's a lot of his philosophies, uh, just uh, perspective of what's happening with his experience. And, and really, I think it's this is a great one for especially business owner, you know, I'm sure you're a business owner listening, but you know, like this is gonna kind of reframe things. And I think what I really like with Scott, cause I actually didn't really know him prior to this, mm-hmm. uh, you did more so, but he really taps into uh, deeper levels than most entrepreneurs go. Yeah. You know, he's not all about the tactics, strategies. He's like, they're not really what you need. He does seem to have like a lot of the mental game figured out, although mm-hmm. he'll be the first to admit that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But he, hey, you know, that's do we ever have it figured out? <laughs> I don't believe the person that says they do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, this is one of those conversations that we it's probably going to be really hard for us to intro it in because we had mm-hmm. so many different conversations and sub conversations. It's a lot of really, really fascinating stuff. Um, but, but I want to give a shout out to his book that's coming out yeah. and it might be published by the time this goes live. We are trying to push this episode live a little sooner yeah. just because it's kind of timely too. Uh, but it's called The Nuclear Effect. Yeah. And he does break down kind of the pillars of that book and it's actually extremely fascinating. And, um, you know, he said he's given it to a lot of kind of some big name folks in the industry and they said, oh, dude, like, yeah, this is good. This is yeah. really good. So I can't wait to get my hands on it. Hopefully uh, it's live by the time this goes live. Yep. And uh, scottoldford.com is his website. So make sure you give that a peek to find all of his various courses and mm-hmm. offerings and uh, all of that good stuff. That's about that. And, and where do you um, take notes on this one? We're always taking notes. Uh, but before the notes, actually, I just wanted to, and I know it's like cardinal rule not to give more than one call to action, but I just want to shout out the, the Facebook group again. Yeah. That Facebook group is popping off right now yeah it's really cool um i mean every day there's someone new but there's new topics now it's not just us posting stuff it's literally the community that we bring in there and it's mainly almost all of them are podcast listeners like yourself yep and uh it's just a perfect place to discuss the episodes we actually try to invite every single one of the speakers or the guests we have on the show into that group Mm -hmm. so if you have a question you can just tag them and they will see it and, and pretty much all of them respond yeah so there's really no better way to connect not only with us, but with the actual person we bring on as a guest. And then from there, I mean, you know, there's just a lot of marketing, life, business, all sorts of cool talk in there. So yeah. flowchartgroup.com. Flowchartgroup.com. It's free. There's no pay, nothing. Just uh, hit the join button and we'll get you in there. Yep. And then the notes, as always, 38470comp or hustleandflowchart.com. Uh, well. uh, hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. There you go. Uh, grab the notes that we took for you on this episode at uh, one of those places. That was hustleandflowchart.com slash comp or oh. three. Eight four seven zero. texting that number in the word comp c-o-m-p and you'll get the notes too yeah and uh yeah let's let's, let's talk to in. scotty o scotty o yo matt really quick yo. so um we were just messing around with our favorite most favorite tool that helps us ninjally do jump, SEO. jump the ranks yes. and uh creepily beat the competitors out there on google and YouTube lots of adjectives here yeah i'm just trying to use adjectives and sound smart but i'm using i don't know i think they're working out yeah but uh it's, it's, we basically have a tool that helps us do all of this stuff to help with our content marketing and get a lot of visibility for everything we put out in the world yes that, what tool, is that tool is called hrefs dang right it is com that's spelled a h r e f s dot com and we do have a membership and and i'm not saying this just because they're a sponsor of ours but we actually use it mm-hmm. we pay for it and we love it it's a, one of our most used tools in our business to figure out what keywords to go after what competitors are doing to figure out what uh where we're ranking so we can you know sort of level up the rankings for the various keywords that we're pushing and dude it does so freaking much it's a lot there's a lot to uncover and it's a beast when you get in there uh but they it's, it's got a lot going on. Mm. So you definitely want to check out Ahrefs. It's kind of, it's basically a, a tool that <laughs> we only really talk about it actually on this podcast. Yeah. Um, and, and it's super cool that they're supporting us. And it's, it's actually, we reached out 
to ask them about that originally because we love their tools so much. We wanted to somehow shine some more light on them with yeah. the cat. So um, it's really cool. You should check it out at ahrefs.com. Yep. And uh, basically check out their content too. They have a great YouTube channel. If you check out ahrefs, their channel there. Oh, we've They're, learned a ton about SEO just by watching uh-huh. their YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. They literally give a ton of SEO strategies and, you know, spotting opportunities and gaps and da 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 da. We'll make a big old list in future episodes. They spot sponsored our show last year actually and like each one we made kind of like a new nugget yeah of of like a, a new training you can use in seo and then use hrefs as to just basically speed up the process mm-hmm. so their youtube channel is great for that they have a blog as well and uh so check them out mm-hmm. ahrefs.com and uh you're gonna love it because we love them. yep see you scott welcome to the show man What's up? What's happening? Happening. Well, this is this is uh craziness is happening, man, or at least so people think. Yeah. <laughs> craziness yeah. in the world. At least at the time of this recording, who knows. Yeah, right before we hit record, we were we were chatting about the coronavirus and and world markets and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So, um we figured might as well just record this and let other people hear the conversation we're having. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, well, I think, I think I, I was actually, uh, I was on Mike Dillard's podcast there last week and we were talking mm-hmm. about, you know, what to do. And then, and then it's really funny because we talked about how the market was going to like go down. And then like four days later, it just like Clark. the bottom fell out. <laughs> yeah. 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 It got plunk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and I got some friends that like really play the stock market and they've been shorting it for a while. And you know, they're like, they're doing what they're having, a, they're having a fun time. Well, yeah, everything's probably, on discount. Probably the only yeah, people on having a fun time, but, um, but, but, but yeah, no, it's really, it's really, um, it's really kind of crazy what fear does, you mm-hmm. know, because like, uh, I think we're moving into a market right now. Like we just came from a crazy, crazy, crazy bull market and uh, for the last like 11 years. And I think now we're just, I, I think, you know, in this online space, we were talking about this too. Um, you know, I, I, I've advised, I mean, I've, I've built, you know, 10 businesses past seven figures in this, in this, in this industry. I've helped over a hundred scale past, uh, 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 you know, seven figures. And, um, we're, we're going from, Hey, let's scale to let survive mentality. Mm, yeah. And, and, and we're, we're not like the virus has nothing to do with it. Like, right. like when the, the virus goes away and everyone, there's a cute, like blah, 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 blah. Like, it's not going to matter. Like this brought us to where I think the economy had to go anyways. And so I think that if you're like in this digital realm right now, one of two things, number one, if you're in the business opportunity space, you're going to crush it over the next three years. Oh yeah. That without a doubt, I mean, a lot of people I've worked with, they're in the business opportunity space, the ethical ones I, I, I work with. <laughs> and, uh, and if you're in the business improvement space, um, I, think there's, I think there's a lot of money to be made because there's lots of people that are like, okay, you know what? When the market's down, I got to double down. Mm-hmm. And and let's figure this stuff out. And then and then of course there's a whole pool of people that are like, oh, I'm scared. I'm afraid. Let me like not spend any money. Let me not do anything. And let me you know, let me stay in my wood house with uh, you know a hundred thousand rounds of ammunition <laughs> and all my toilet paper. <laughs> right. and, to the and, roof. And, and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that sure. person. It's just like you know you're not going to make any money with that person. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I mean, no. I think there's specifically some opportunities right now with the specific, with the coronavirus thing going around right now for digital entrepreneurs. I think. Oh yeah. I think you're going to find people holding themselves up, self quarantining, doing that kind of stuff, and they need to keep themselves occupied. How are they going to keep themselves occupied? Well, let's uh, put content and opportunities in front of them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm like I decided this morning I'm going to do like a you know a, a, like a, a program on how to make it so that you can like make money in this time right now. Mm-hmm. Like all my stuff that I, like I do on cash injection and how to like, you know, raise money and what to do with your finances and what the, you know, all these different types of things that I've never really put into a course. I'm like, well, right now is a perfect time to sell that. Oh my God. That is, that's brilliant. I mean, right? we're like, talking about- like, I, I've, I've, I've always talked like very specific, like, you know, I have my ROI method and I have my six pit, like all my methodologies are very based on, all right, let's build a business really well over the next two, three years. Um, most people are not, going to be able to look that way. And I think the other problem is the businesses that are actually doing less than a million dollars a year actually have a higher potential right now mm. than the ones that are, you know, one to 5 million. Well, yeah. expand on that. When so, that. so yeah. So, I mean, you know, and, and, and this is, I always have to say that like, you could look at everything from an optimistic view or like a pessimistic view, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like literally everything in life 
And I never want to be the one that's helping people be fearful. I just want to give people facts as much as unbiased as possible. Right. Sure. Um, so, so, you know, the way I look at it is this, like most businesses under a million dollars in revenue has a lot less overhead than the businesses that are two, three, four million. The businesses at two, three, four million have a lot slower time. I'll just call it, let's call it like above a million, below a million. It's not really that, but you know, depending on their business structure. It's a good so, metric. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just using the numbers to make it easy. And um, so, so, you know, like for example, I have a business right now, like last year I had a business 44 team. If I was going into this time right now with 44 team members in the business I had beforehand, even though it was doing $10 million, I'd be frightened shitless. Mm. I just straight up, I would be, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going into this. I got one team member wow. and um, <laughs> you know, I got a multi-million dollar business, you know? And uh, so it, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me, but most yeah. people don't do that, right? Most people might have a quarter million dollar year business with one team member. The, 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 the honest truth is the faster you can pivot, the faster you can move, the faster you can change your marketing message to, you know, hey, here's the, here's an opportunity. Here's how you can make it so you survive. Here's how. You, so think about it this way: P- people always talk about, especially in this online space, you know, um, you know, freedom in life. Well, right now we're going back. We're we're going down a level on the hierarchy of needs to security. Mm-hmm. So instead of freedom, what you're selling security, financial security versus financial freedom. So in all the market messages, the offers, right. yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're changing, you're changing the way that, and you're changing the way that people think people are not thinking the next two years. They're now thinking the next 30 to 90 days. Sure. So if you're selling something that helps somebody two years down the road, you're going to have a hard time. Hmm. And so now you have to like, so because the only people like me are going to look like that, you know, like I, you know, people that have some money in the bank and things are good. And you know, like, like this is not going to affect me on a day-to-day basis. The way I look at this and anybody that, you know, it does have, you know, you got a $5 million business, you got, you know, some money in the bank, you got, you were smart enough not to, you know, take your money out of the stock market early, mm-hmm. like all those things that you're going to, if you got cash, there's so many opportunities and investments and finances and going, buying other people's businesses and, 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 and all these different types of things. Mm-hmm. So, but if you have a very highly leveraged business, or let's say you're growing really quickly over the last couple of years and you haven't gotten to those like profit times or you, you know, a lot of your clients are having, you know, a hard time paying, it's going to be more difficult for you. And you got to like, look at, okay, the reason I ended up a million dollars in debt when I was 21 was because my business didn't do that well. Uh, between 19, no, by the time I was 19 to 21, I was operating a business. I had $80,000 loss per month mm-hmm. and I didn't cut it because I thought that the market was going to change. I thought the situation was going to change. I thought my, I, like, I didn't want to let go of my team. Yeah. yeah. Oh, was it a yeah. mainly a team thing for you? Yeah, it was a team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, it was. I had an agency at the time. So and, I, I, um, I'm actually kind of curious. Like when when you have a business like that and you're you're going deeper and deeper into debt, how are you financing that debt that you get to a million dollars in debt? So well, you got to think about like think about it this way: if you have two million dollars in revenue, three million dollars in revenue, and uh, you you can go and get credit pretty quick, mm-hmm. right? And I had you know I had some really good years. Mm-hmm. back back then. And so, you know, you can finance line of credit, credit cards, loans against that. And that's what I did. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, like you can't get it, you can't get a million dollars in debt if you're just like Joe Blow making a hundred grand sure, a year. Yeah. Right. But, um, but, but, you know, yeah. So, so, and I think that that's the other thing. Like I have a lot of people that I see right now that, and I think, you know, if you're listening to this and you got a multi-million dollar business and you know that you're going to be kind of going through some turmoil, my best advice for you is like, you know, do things that are going to make money, right? Like, unless you have a stockpiled cash, do things that are going to make you money right now. And, 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 you know, don't like try, like the worst thing you can do in business is try to be nice Mm. when things aren't going the right way. And then if you're, if you're in, and you, you might need to pivot, you might need to change. If you're, if you're doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a month, like right now is like right now is the best time that you can work hard Mm. in my opinion. Yeah, um, it, it seems like people are like you said they're they're survival mode. So there's going to be a separation of people who are survive or you know stuck in that mentality, and then probably another they're the hustlers, the ones that see opportunity in these gaps right now. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like you just got to turn the news off. You got to turn the news feed off. You just got to be like, all right, what's my opportunity? Who can I help? How can I help them get to work? Mm-hmm. And keep your keep your expenses low. If you need to like hire, you know, right now would not be a good time to like get courses. Right now is a good time to like find a mentor, find someone to coach you if you don't know how to do something. Mm-hmm. Like laser focused. 
um, like know exactly like the biggest thing you need right now is you need to be, you need to have some level of alignment of like, you knowing what your positioning is, your messaging is, and then you having clarity on the plan that you need to attack on. Mm-hmm. And, no, uh, and, and, and like, that's it from, from and your like, perspective. Yeah, and, then, how- and then like, and then like, stop listening to like your family and your friends and like all the fear mm-hmm. and just like, you know, stay in that like abundant mindset. Yeah. While knowing that, like, you, you know, opportunities like this only come around every 10, 15 years. Right. You know, for the most part. So from and, your perspective, how long do you think that people should kind of be in this mindset? I mean, we know that that, that this kind of shift is happening. And it, in my opinion, it's overdue. It's about three years overdue for this sort of financial shift to happen. But how long do you think that that's going to last where people are going to be more in survival mode versus, uh, you know, versus hustle mode? I think it's going to take, I mean, here's the thing. Like, like we, 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 we've, um, that's pretty much impossible to, to, to tell. Um, but, but here, here, here's what I'll give you. Okay. So I gotta, I gotta, you know, put an asterisk to this to say that mm-hmm. not a financial advisor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, never went to college, never went to university. I, I really, you should probably never listen to me. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 you know, my legal disclaimer, this is probably complete bullshit. Um, so, so what I will, and, and what I will say is that I, I'm really, really good at making money. Um, I've helped people make hundreds of millions of dollars. I've made myself 30 million plus in the last you know few number of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm not like some pro investor, right? I'm becoming a better and better investor, but you know, I'm not some pro investor. So, so take everything I say with like a grain of salt and then use your own like, you know, data and analytics and mm-hmm. what your, what your gut's telling you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so here's, here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the fact that like, this is going to happen. Um, it's going to alter a lot of our society on how we're connecting with each other. I think we're going to connect with each other. And, and, and I think it's going to, you know, when, when the NBA gets canceled um, and, and this, you know, if you're listening to this in 2027 and the next, you know, economy thing goes down, it doesn't matter when it, it's pretty, it's, it, the, the cycle stays pretty much the same. There's always yep. indicators like we're Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, 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 you know, if I were anybody right now, I'd be like, okay, you know what? I probably don't need, you know, four vacations this year. Um, you know, uh, let, let me, let me change my, let's balance my, let's balance my life. I think that a lot of, you know, don't spend money on dumb shit to impress mm-hmm. other people. That, that, that's like that always. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next mm-hmm. thing, I think a lot of people are going to lose their job for the last time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been saying this for a while and I know it's been like, going to be like this for a while. And, you know, we are going to, uh, a contractor freelancer oriented world in, in so many ways. Um, you got a lot of people that are going to be losing their jobs because of technology, robots, artificial intelligence, especially over the next three, four five years. Yeah. And then even more in the next, you know, leading up to 2035 when we hit, you know, singularity and, and, and computers are smarter than us. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and so, you know, I think that if you're in the business of helping other people learn how to make money, uh, I think you're going to do well. Yeah. Um, if you're in the business of coaching and transformation and allowing people to upgrade their consciousness, I think you're going to do well. Um, if, if you're selling luxury goods, the 1%, the, the percentage of the 1% that are buying, or let's call it the top 3%, the people that are in the top 3% that are buying things that they don't really need is going to decrease. You know what I mean? So like ultra luxury never really changes, but luxury does change. Right. There's kind of um, like a step below. Ultra. Yeah. It's like, it's the people that can't actually afford the luxury, but they're right. doing it anyways. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, so like pretty much everybody that has all the personal brands on Instagram, most people, most, I mean, listen, I've, I've mentored so many people, so many personal brands, so many seven figure plus businesses. Most people don't have any real money. They have yeah. cash flow. Well, I mean, you hear about the people all the time that make 150 grand a year, but they have a fifty thousand dollar Rolex that they mm-hmm. bought on debt anyway. You know, like right, debt, that's right. kind of who you're talking yeah. about, <laughs> right? Well, 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 but I, I mean, you know, and and I always, you know, most people that make twenty thousand dollars a month in their business profit more money than the person making, you know, a hundred. Yeah, sure. Almost, I like I see that almost every day. Every day, someone yeah. comes to me at a hundred grand. They're like, "How much money in the bank?" Oh, you know, forty grand. How much money do you have in profit? Uh, five grand a month. Hmm. Hmm. Right. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. You're, the same, as, here. you're, you're the same as this other guy. You're just trying to get your, you know, seven figure award. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just going for um, that, that status symbol. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Wait, wait, and like, listen, I, listen, I was that person. I can only talk about it because I was that person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get you your know, gold I, record I, from ClickFunnels. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, actually, I never got anything from ClickFunnels because I never used it. So uh, <laughs> there you go. I didn't cool. get shit. 
<laughs> I didn't get shit. I don't know how many X's I'd be able to have on that now. I'd, I'd have, I'd have, I'd be the dude, you know, going down the road with like, you know, 40 of those award, you know, uh, uh, plaques. But anyways, that's, that's neither here nor there. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to get down. Any, anybody that's been able to do that is amazing. Right. Right. Of course. And I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's just, um, you know, I think, I think, I think now is the time to get away from vanity and get into like really, all right, cool, sweet. Let's, let's not just flash our cool car or our cool house. Well, let's actually make real money. Yeah. And like, let's actually make it so that we can not just survive, but thrive. Yeah. I want to go back to really so, quick. So, to, like, so what- then, so then in the next part, I just want to say on that is that, you know, I think, I think this online space, I mean, I think the next five years, you're going to see this blow up 10 to 30 X what it is today. Yeah. So why do you, why do you think that? Yeah. Cause that's actually what I was thinking about because all these companies now, at least what I'm thinking, are, they're sending their folks home, you know, to work remotely. They're going to wake up and be like, you know what? We're dumbasses. Let's, exactly. Let's, 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 you know what? We don't need most of the people we actually have. And let's get rid of all these expensive offices. You got to think of Yeah. Like the employees are probably going to be like, well, shit, I've been doing this all wrong. Mm. And uh, you know, there's other opportunities, but no one's going to want to go back to work. Everyone's going to be like, fuck that. <laughs> And then the companies are going to be like, oh, shit, this is actually pretty interesting. I could probably save a lot of money. You know, like there's going to be a shift of some sort. After well, it's going to end up where like pretty much every company is run by one or two people. And then the rest of the workforce is all just freelancers underneath them. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I think I think that that's the way that things are going. I think that, um, you know, I, I, I'm writing a book right now. I'm writing my next my my my, my uh, book. My current book's coming out in uh, June 16th, which is my birthday oh. called the nuclear effect, which I talk about how to create the currency of money, the currency of uh, audience and the currency of influence. Cause with those three currencies, you can basically do whatever you want in the world. Right. Right. But my next, but, but the book, I don't know if it'll be the one after that or the one after that one depends on timing. Um, but it, it, you know, it's basically about how to activate the entrepreneurialism that's in our DNA. Cause we were all entrepreneurs back 17, 1800s. It's only the last 200 years that we all got trained to be, you know, monkeys working in a, in a, in a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a plant yep, you know factory I mean? and all that. Yeah, yeah. Factory. Right. And so like before that we were all 1700s, you were an entrepreneur. Everybody was a freelancer. Everybody was an entrepreneur. That's a good point. You and guess. so, you know, we got what, maybe six generations of that. Like that's still embedded inside of our, when people are like, Oh no, I'm not an entrepreneur. I can't. And I'm like, that's bullshit. If, if you can turn on and off anything in your, you can turn off your heart, heart disease. You can turn off your cancer. Like we've proven all of this, that we can turn on and off um, different parts of our DNA yeah. and, and entrepreneurships, you know, embedded. And so I'm, you know, I'm calling that book. It's in your blood. Um, mm. And, and, and so, you know, I don't know when that's ever, and I haven't even started it yet, <laughs> but it's, it's a concept and, uh, but it's so true. And like, that's, what's going to happen. You're going to have the rise up, of everybody is an entrepreneur. Everyone has a personal brand. Everybody's sort of, you know, helping, you know, people in this new online space. And, um, it's going to, it's going to grow. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm talking like considerably and cons- like in a considerable way. Um, and I think a lot of the time we, because it's so small right now, we think we're in like this little nook and cranny of the mm-hmm. world, which we are. And it's about to like unleash to everybody believing that this is like real. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to yeah, be weird. It, it, it seems like it's happening now. It's going to happen at a rapid pace with, with this. Um, I'm talking, I'm talking, is it, this is going to happen in, this is going to happen less than 24 months. You're right. I can less see that. Less than 24 months. Like if you, you are, um, and I mean like, you know, because I mentor so many people that are doing well and a lot of my friends and everything else, like I see what's happening, like what works and what doesn't work pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> who has money and who doesn't have money and all those different types of things, right? So what yeah. would you what would you say to the folks like, yeah, you know, like in these times, uh, you know, like the things to stay away from and the things to do uh, because things are, are like you said, going to rapidly change in this 24 months. So what are some of the new <laughs> norms I mean, that we should yeah, I mean, establish? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, number one, um, you know, don't hire because it look, don't do anything because someone told you to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First That's off. good advice. All right, like, go ahead and turn off this yeah. podcast. No, no, I'm just hey, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> I mean, but, but I always tell everybody, I'm like, you know, my job as a mentor and advisor anytime. When I'm an investor in something, a little bit different, you know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. Yeah. But when I'm an advisor and mentor for someone, I'm like, listen, whatever I tell you, if, if your gut does tells you to do something else, listen to your fucking gut. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Like I'm, I'm a dumbass compared to your, your gut knows exactly. <laughs> I was listening to this great <laughs> podcast with Robert Downey Jr. recently. And he's talking about how like, you know, there's like this invisible line in life that is your intuition. And the more that you follow it, the stronger it gets and the stronger the pull. And it's so true. Like for me, like when I fell in love with my wife, but two and a half years ago, I like found that surrender of like, you know, I fuck it, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, this is crazy. I got married to her six months after meeting her. Nice. And, yeah. and um, that was like my first experience, of like true surrender. And then I just kept on surrendering and surrendering and surrendering to like this, my intuition. And uh, so, I mean, listen, it's, it's a, every, every day that goes by, it's always a good day to listen to your intuition. Yeah. So that's first thing. That's first thing. Second thing is, um, is, you know, don't invest in anything that's vanity metric. Like, like nobody, like, it doesn't matter how many likes you have mm-hmm. or like how many followers you have or like any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, number three, have more conversations with people right? More conversations, get on the more, get on, get on more phone calls, get on more. Po- here, listen, here, what the reason I'm on a podcast is because I want to, I want to have, you know, I want to spend $50,000 less on, on advertising every month because mm-hmm. I want to put that money Smart in the bank. Man. Right? Yeah. Right? So I've, I haven't done a podcast in like two years. I, mean, I just, I just booked like 45. We noticed that we were doing some research. We're like, damn, Scott hasn't been anywhere recently. What the hell is he talking about these days? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it works yeah, out right. fine. It's <laughs> great. Who knows what? Who knows what happened when you got on a search? On that one. It's yeah, like, I mean, it's a good thing. It works out good because if we get overly researched, then you don't get you know the the, the kind of cool, interesting conversations that we probably yeah. wouldn't mm-hmm. have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, yeah, so. yeah. So, 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 so that's that's um, you know you just got to think about things in like partnerships and organic. A lot of people, yeah, and, and then the next one, and again, I don't have a list in front of me, so I'm just freeballing yeah. this shit. And, um, I would say the next one is like a lot of people outsource shit. They don't need to outsource mm-hmm. because it, like they, fa- they find like they, they get to a certain point in business and then they think it's cool to outsource shit. Mm-hmm. And then they, they just like, they start outsourcing and then they outsource the wrong shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you gotta it, get that unless you're really week. bad. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you actually just, and you also need to know, are you scaling for the right reason? Well, like, you gotta be you doing scared? the right are, shit, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, and 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 the other side of it is like a lot of the time, in order for someone to go from say twenty thousand a month to fifty thousand a month, they gotta decrease their profit margin by like a lot. Yeah. Right. If they want to grow and they want to get there quickly, and so you gotta really know. You gotta be like, okay, I th- I think there's a I think there's a good I think this business makes sense for me to get the fifty thousand a month because if I get the fifty thousand a month, well, now I have twenty thousand profit versus say you know six thousand profit. Mm-hmm. But the but the journey to that. I think people think that they can like keep their same profit margins as they scale. And like, that's unless you're scaling 10 to 20% a year, that's not true. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think you got to be careful on that. Um, you probably want to keep a little more cash in the bank right now. Yeah. Right. You want to keep a little bit more cash in the bank. I think, I think if you look at your uh, re- if you look at your clients, you want more clients that pay you less money. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So you got, you only got five clients and they all pay you 5,000 a month. You're making 25 a month. Well, that's cool. Two of them drops off. You're mm-hmm. screwed. Yeah. yeah, a lot right. of agency owners that we know out there, yeah, have that model. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I've I've owned many of agencies. I've grown three different agencies past seven, two past seven plus, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, you know, try to figure out how to get that monthly reoccurring revenue. Yeah, like if you wake up every single month and you're like, okay, you know what, all my expenses plus thirty percent of my expenses are covered by my monthly reoccurring revenue. Mm. Well, that's gonna take a lot less stress. Think about the, yeah, the fear and the survival mode just kind of goes away, you know? It's right, right. Yeah, and you numbers. can actually think, and, and I think, I think there's like levels of, you got to think about, you know, levels of, uh, I think a lot of people right now are like in the primal instincts, Yeah. you know, and then there's people that are in like reactive instincts and then there's people that are, you know, in more of the, and this is a new framework that I've been developing on consciousness and business. Um, and there's after that, so that, that, that's 80% plus of the population. And then after that, you have a willful consciousness. That's like the hustler, the Gary Vanderchuk type of uh, you know person. That's like rah rah rah. Let's work fourteen hours a day. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have the the intellectual consciousness. That's like okay, let me look at the market. Let me look at the business. Let me look at you know. Let me look at the data. Let me look and see what's going to happen. And then you have above that, you have like a, the intuitive consciousness. That's like let let, let me listen to my let, let, forget everything else. Let me. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to meditate. Things are going to be cool. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's always, always been okay. Mm-hmm. If not, we wouldn't have been here by now. 
That's right. And, um, and you know what your, 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 the, the likeliness of like your, your mother and your father getting together and you are the exact egg and sperm of being here. What's like <laughs> one in like how many trillion? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, give up, give up this control. You yeah. For, you like, forget, like, listen, if you were here, you're here for a reason. It wasn't a mistake. And like, let's keep moving on. Well, right? not right. to mention the odds of being in this time where the life expectancy isn't 30 years old, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We have to be very different, very different conversations. It's, it's like, if you're above 35 years old right now, you're like, you're winning the fucking game. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. You're thriving. Yeah. Get over, yeah. Yeah. Get over you're, your you're, bad you're, shit. You're, you're older. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, and then I think another thing is like, you got to go back to, the more you trust your, and, and you know, listen, I've been, I've been in a million dollars of debt multiple times at this mm-hmm. point. Um, so I've made a, I've played, made plenty of mistakes. One thing I've learned about making mistakes is that you can get yourself out of there just as fast as you got in. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, I think, I think it's about resourcefulness. Like if you don't trust yourself, um, and, and you can work on this with, you know, I'm a huge advocate of hypnotherapy and meditation and these different modalities of, of, of helping your subconscious mind. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so much I ended up starting a company specifically for entrepreneurs to help them on mindset. Yeah, actually, awesome. on that point right there, I know last time we talked, we actually yeah. had, I think, a like a quick conversation about psychedelics and microdosing. And I, I think I've seen like on Facebook that your perspective has changed on even some of that kind of stuff. So I'm curious if... You know, yeah, I think, you I think, there. you know, I think, I think, you know, my official version of that is that there's so many different forms of, uh, and then again, this is, your, this is all about intuition, right? Mm. Like whatever, whatever is presented to you as the way for you to evolve your mind and who you are, go with it. Mm. Some people that's psychedelics, some people that's, um, you know, going in and, and doing a pilgrimage and in, in somewhere in the world or doing a, you know, going and, 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 and training with a monk, mm-hmm. um, you know, some people that's you know, anything, but you know, you, you need to work on that part of you. I've, I've done so many different, I've tried so many different things and, uh, they've all worked and, but they're all for different times in your life. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, I'm in a time in my life where, where, you know, I don't need that psychedelic ver- like, psychedelics are great, just like meditation's great. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that they can be used in really, really, really good ways. Unfortunately, and you think about it this way, you, the, the problem with psychedelics that I see from most people is that they're putting a, you know, you got a, a 60 watt light bulb and you're putting 1400 watts to 60 light, light bulb and it breaks <laughs> the light bulb. Right. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Whereas meditation is like, all right, let's flick it on. Let's, you know, let's get a little bit better, a little bit better. Like, so, so it's, it's kind of like the, the exponential growth. It's like uh, a ramp up. Yeah. Rather than. Yeah, a- absolutely. Bam! Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so, and so that's, I mean, I, I've, I've experienced so many people that I've mentored, they go these other countries, they do their ayahuasca, they do their stuff and they come back and they blow up their business mm-hmm. and they had a perfectly fine business. Um, and, and like, you, you know, I, I've blown up businesses before and I get being in alignment and everything else. But a lot of the time, they, they, they more so, it doesn't get integrated. Mm-hmm. And so I think you have to be really careful with any time that you are spiritually evolving or, or, you know, and I'm not saying that from a religious perspective. I'm just talking about that as you, as your soul and your mind, like those right. parts of you. When you're evolving those parts, you got to be careful because uh, your business has a certain level of consciousness, right? So if you, if you built your business on a reactive or a willful consciousness, you go down to Peru you do seven days ayahuasca and you jolt up to like, you know, a higher level of consciousness and you come back, you're going to hate your business. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you don't have enough money to be able to quit your business, but then you're like, screw it. I'll go to Bali. And now you got some, you're in Bali and you're like, you know, kind of flying high above the clouds and you're not really giving much to the world. You know what I mean? And so you just got to be careful. You just got to be careful. It's all a balance. Yeah. You got to have the balance. it, 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 it 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 absolutely is a balance. So I'm not like pro or anti anything. I'm more of like, you know, if you're called to doing that, go for it, do it. Hmm. Um, you know, that's your life's path. Um, but, but if you see it and you're like, oh, I'm doing it because, you know, this guy told me to, or again, hmm. you shouldn't Good. do things that people tell you to do. You should <laughs> listen to yourself. That's right? it. I mean, and you said, I, I thought it was actually super smart when you said integration, you know, is integrate yeah. this stuff. And I think that is a gut check because I've definitely done some things you know, uh, all over the place, not just on psychedelics and just be like, yeah, you just like, it's easy to just, well, you're in a total mindset, you know, mind state difference that you can just fuck off the rest of the day. And it's like, wait, well, hold I on. Does that actually serve uh, you and your life and the yeah. greater good? 
Yeah. Well, I think that that any, it doesn't matter if it's a meditation or hypnotherapy yeah. or whatever. I mean, you know, you don't want to do hypnotherapy and then go right into a sales call. <laughs> you exactly. Know I mean? Time or, and place. Or, or, yeah. And, and I think that that's another thing is like going back to what, it, what I would do or wouldn't, you know, make mm-hmm. sure you take, most people don't need to work 14 hours a day. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you got a lot on the go, uh, you know, any more, I find most creative entrepreneurs, if a creative entrepreneur is, you know, working more than 30 hours a week, uh, everything starts to go to shit. What would you say a creative entrepreneur is? Like, how would you define that? I, I, I would say that, um, like, if you're uh, more of like a, a creative and not like an operational person. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I think operational people actually have more capacity to work, which is why factories, you know, did work so well on 40, 50 hour work weeks. Yeah. S- systems, right. automations, processes. Yeah, but you, you got to like, you know, you got you to kind of like, you got to like sit back on the hammock and just think when mm-hmm. you're an entrepreneur. Sure. And you got to do that because like the dots connect when you're in that sort of like outside space. And so many entrepreneurs, they just work, 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 work. Mm-hmm. And they just, do, and again, it go, comes from listening, like, listen, when somebody, when, when, when I am always careful, like if I give advice and I'm not directly mentioning, like I, I could take 10 people all at a hundred thousand dollars a month in revenue. And every single one of them would have a different plan of what they need to do mm-hmm. in order to grow every single one. And so th- there's a problem sometimes in this online space where we like, we try to create a method and then put everyone in a box and like everyone do this. I think mm-hmm. that that's complete bullshit. Yeah. And, and, and I've done it in past businesses and I saw the fact that it doesn't work. Like people, like it doesn't work from a perspective of they're growing their business. A lot, the number of people that I've helped grow in their business and then they become unhappy made me change the way that I do my business and the way that I help people. Yeah, because I mean, you've, uh, I know Matt spoke to uh, with you, you know, years ago, and you've shifted massively, it seems like, just from the last time you guys had a conversation, oh, yeah. four, what, four years ago or so? Something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure everything was, 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 uh, my God, I wouldn't want to listen to that episode. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. We'll tack it no. to the end of this one. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> no, no the, I, I believe the title of that episode was actually called something like Agency Suck. Here's what to do instead. Or something. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still believe that though. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I still believe. I mean, listen, the agencies don't suck. I think that uh, they give you the launch pad into, you know, great things. Sure. Yeah. Right. So what, what kind of stuff when you are working with entrepreneurs, and I know it's all over the place and everybody has sort of a different path, but yep. what are some of the, the, the commonalities that you find that you're, you're kind of working on with a lot of different people? What are some of the roadblocks that you're helping them get over? Well, I mean, I think, I think most, most people come to me cause they're like, ah, Scott knows the strategies. And I'm like, yeah, that, yeah, that's true. And mm-hmm. you don't need the fucking strategies. Yep. Um, so, so here's, I mean, here, here's a, here's a, the truth and this is so high level, but it's so important. So most people, 80, 90% of all entrepreneurship and being successful is mindset, right? Like if you can't, if, if you're not selling on the phone, like for example, like let's say you, you don't have a high close rate. Mm-hmm. It's because, you know, you're not confident or you don't love yourself or you don't believe in your mm-hmm. product or you don't trust yourself or you don't trust others. Um, it's because your dad said something to you when you're nine years old. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Baggage, it's not yeah. because your sales script sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, if you, if you're, if you can't get your mark, if you're, if you're procrastinating, it's because you're out of alignment. You know, you're not, you're, you, your gut knows you're not supposed to be doing something and you don't know why, but you're still doing it because you think you should do it. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, like I, I everything, heard somebody like say- everything, everything in your business, finances operate, like everything comes back to the way that you're thinking about something. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I heard somebody say that if you're procrastinating on getting your work done, it means that you probably don't enjoy your work. Cause if you enjoyed your work, you wouldn't be procrastinating on it. Right. Sure. Right. Right. And, and, and even, even to the point, I don't think the, I think you can, I don't think you had love, have to love your work. I think you had to love the process, mm-hmm. but you have to know why you're doing something. It needs to have a purpose behind it. Yeah. yeah I mean, it could be stupid things like just the monotonous admin stuff of business. Right. But at the end of the day, if you love your business and you love the customers and yourself and partner, whatever, you're going to do the damn thing because that's part of what feeds this whole thing, this journey. You're Absolutely. On. Absolutely. So, so, um, uh, I, I, yeah. So I think, I think that that's so, so, so important. Mindset's so important. So yeah. I work with people, a lot of mindset, but uh, you know, what I really think the business comes down to, life comes down to, um, it's kind of like three words is like presence, attention, and awareness. Hmm. And you can pretty much scale any business if you have those three things. And, and so, and here's what I mean by that. And it's super like high up there. And, 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 and so I'll try to bring it down as far yeah, as I can. That's good. So, so if you're not present, you're going to let things slip. 
You're not going to look at the finances. You're not going to be looking at your marketing. You're not going to be like if people just literally wrote down on a biweekly basis, marketing, sales, operations, team, mindset, finances, delivery, and listed every problem they're having. And then just went and figured out which ones they're going to solve in the next two weeks. Uh, hmm. People would be much further ahead, dude. I love that. That's like a perfect, yeah, biweekly. Well, that's what that's my that's what my whole that's what my whole book's based on. Like, I wrote sixty four thousand words about that. Nice, yeah. And um, and 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 I probably probably could have wrote another sixty four thousand about it. And um, and 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 so you know that's that whole concept uh, of just being able to take attention list. List down every anxiety every morning you you wake up. List every anxiety you have. Right? Mm-hmm. People have a, like a massive anxiety problem. Right? Especially being entrepreneurs. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Um, write down every anxiety anxiety, and br- if you bring attention and awareness, and it works in every element. You, if you want to be a better marketer, figure out how you can get someone present, paying attention to you, and having awareness of their own life. Mm-hmm. That is marketing. That's same huge, thing yeah. in sales. Same thing in hiring somebody. Same thing in helping somebody that you already have hired. Everything comes at, what's your mindset issues? If you sat down long enough and disconnect it from your phone and disconnect it from the world, you'd know exactly what's going on inside of your head. But most people are too afraid to actually, you know, sit down in a, in a room by themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and would you recommend, you know, this is like, sounds like a journaling process. You know, it could be, you- it could be, it could be a journaling process. It could be, you know, it could be like you talking out loud to yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be, you know, literally anything. Right. Um, you know, one, one thing, one exercise I get people to do in their business, there's like four personalities of a business, of a business owner. There's a business owner, an entrepreneur, a CEO, and an investor. Right. Mm-hmm. So like every single one of those are four different personalities. So like the entrepreneur should never be looking at the cash flow statements because mm-hmm. they don't care. Mm-hmm. Right. So you put your CEO hat on and you're like, okay, well, the, the cash flow statements, you know, definitely are there. So one of the things I do, I get someone to get four seats and put a, you know, CEO on one seat, founder on the other seat, uh, or sorry, entrepreneur on one seat, uh, business owner on the other, CEO on other, investor, and they go through all the problems in their business. And they basically have a self dialogue with themselves, talking from the, one person being the CEO, basically multiple personalities. Mm-hmm. That's what you got to, like, this is the shit you got to do. Yeah. Because that stuff allows you to reveal what's actually going on. You probably don't need another marketing strategy. Uh, or you may, you might need a marketing strategy, but you're not doing anything about it because you're so caught up with the day to day. The reason why the average American or the average person in the world <laughs> has sanity and uh, you know isn't like oh my god, what the heck's happening in the world, or, or or doesn't have sanity is because they're not actually thinking about what they're really doing in their life. They just got into a habit of flow. And if you want to if you want to grow, whether it's growing yourself, growing a relationship, growing a business. You got to be able to take time back. You got to be present with what's going on. You got to give awareness to things and then your attention is going to go to it and to everything else kind of reveals itself. Yeah. So, and then that might say, okay, you know what? I need to go get somebody to manage my finances. Cause you know what? I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that might tell you, you know what? You need to go hire Scott because you don't actually know how to scale. That might be, you know, you know what? I need to go. And I thought I, I thought Facebook ads was my strategy. You know what? that doesn't actually make sense because I don't have the money to actually even spend on Facebook ads. Hmm. Right. And so I think that, I think, I think what I, what I teach these days is radically simple and radically complex at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you know, when I mentor someone, when I work with somebody, it's about me getting them to have the mindset that they need so that when they're done with me, like, th- like I'm not one of these people that like got clients for like years. Well, you're shaping like, them for ever. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, one hundred percent. It's it's yeah. it's like I'm getting them ready for the rest of their the rest of their life. Yeah, and 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 so and 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 I mean, the reason I mentor people is because I look at this and I'm like, hey, listen, if I help a thousand people become a millionaire, probably going to pro- good things are probably going to happen to me. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure of that. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a percentage of them might say, "Screw you, Scott." I mean, you know, but a good sure. percentage of them are going to do great things in this world, and 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 I'm going to be able to be involved with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's what I'd say. Like that is uh, from a high level, like, yes, there's all the strategies and the tactics and I give them the 90 day plan and here's what you do and go and do it and, and, and all that. But that is, that's the essence of what more entrepreneurs need to do. And mm-hmm. I mean, it took me, most, most entrepreneurs are like chickens. They're just pecking, 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 pecking. You know what I mean? Like they're just fast. They're like pecking, pecking, pecking. And you got to slow down uh, and, 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 and be more, um, 
you, you gotta you gotta get out of your reactive consciousness and get into your strategic consciousness. Yeah. And yeah. it seems like the pecking is more surface level shit that's usually, yeah, reactive. It's some email that just got sent your way from someone else's agenda. You're not digging the well. You're not going deep on yeah. something that really matters to you. And most of I mean, I, one of the best things my mother ever, t- I mean, my, and my parents aren't entrepreneurs. Yeah. I don't come from an entrepreneurial, you know, yeah. I, I was an entrepreneur by the time I was seven, eight years old, <laughs> but, mm. um, and I did really well in my teenage years, but like, like the, like the honest truth is, is, is the best piece of advice my mother said to me is almost everything that happens on a daily basis won't matter in 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So true. <laughs> and, and, uh, she was giving me that advice cause you know, I sucked at school. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, and then I finally was like, you know what, I'm going to go make money, forget this school thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's, let's just focus on something that's actually going to help me in life. And, and, and so, you know, and, and so that, you know, that, that, that's what happened. Like, that's the truth. People get caught up in the day to day. They stress out about the day to day. And, 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 you know, like what creates entrepreneurs, you got to think about like most entrepreneurs are under a high level of stress. Um, they're very misunderstood, very lonely. Uh, most people can't talk to their significant others unless their significant other is an entrepreneur. Um, and, 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 you know, it, it, it can be incredibly, incredibly tough being an entrepreneur and also realizing that most entrepreneurs are created by someone having that day saying, you know what, this is enough. Enough is enough. Like I was 360 pounds when I was 17 years old and there was came a day where I was like, this is enough. Hmm. I'm done. And in less than 16 months, I lost, you know, half my body weight. Is that how it was for the debt? And like, as you said, yeah, twice. Yeah, it's always, yeah, it's, it's always, it's always, it's always been like, you know what? Enough is enough. for me. I mean, listen, I was, I was like, kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm an anomaly from a perspective. Like I'm a natural born entrepreneur. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like my life path is just like, yo, uh, you just, I just understood the world differently when I was a kid. Right. I was, I was an only kid in an isolated place left by himself, kind of <laughs> with a computer. Yeah, it's dangerous. And I had so slow of internet, I didn't end up on porn. I ended up on building businesses. <laughs> right. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> so, That's a nice so, twist on your slow internet problem. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. But like the, the porn image would take 11 minutes to load. So I would <laughs> like, I'm not patient enough for this shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go bank some money instead. Yeah. yeah. Let's make some money so I can get some high speed internet. Exactly. Um, need some fiber. But, but um, and, and then of course you, you, you come, you know, 10, 12 years later and then you realize how bad porn is for you and then you quit it and you're like, Oh, isn't that funny? <laughs> um, <waste> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, so anyways, uh, I don't even know where that, but that yeah. I don't even remember what the question oh, I was. I also like the whole shift to like, so yeah, it, it, enough is enough. You're overweight and you oh, say, yeah. I'm done. And then same with debt. It's something like, was that the big shift for you? You just were fed yeah. up. I mean, I think like, you know, I, I was kind of at the lows of the lowest 2011 and, um, you know, uh, I, I sold my agency for a dollar. Whoa. So, um, so you, you were could, done. Like you were just oh, no, getting dude, rid it, of this it thing. Bad. It was bad. It was, yeah. bad. It was yeah. bad. Like I had, I had, I don't know, $13,000, $14,000 a month in debt payments. Mm. Um, owed p- so many people money. And, um, you know, I went working there and I was making, you know, 2,500 bucks a month. Yeah. Um, working at the agency that, you know, I essentially built. And, 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 and so anyways, that lasted for a year. I mean, I, I was super, I hate using the word depressed because I think that, you know, I, I, I don't know if I necessarily was depressed. I was just like at a dark time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, solid million dollars in debt. Um, and, uh, you know, a year later, I was like, if I keep doing this, like I'm going to stay in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada for the rest of my life. Wow. And that's way and, up there. Huh? It's freaking cold up there. <laughs> it's not a good time up there from that perspective. Uh, right, great right. people, great people, terrible place to live. Mm. Um, you know, nice in the summer. <laughs> and, and, but anyways, so, so, I mean, I remember, I would remember going to work. I could barely pull myself out of bed by like 10. Huh. Uh, I'd go to work you know, smoke a pipe of weed before I go to work. Mm-hmm. And I know some people do that now and, and like, that's fine. I, I, I find anytime that you're doing something to suppress yourself, like smoking weed, like, you know, from that here and now is not a big deal, but if you're doing it a lot, there's something off in your life. Right. Consistently uh, without I, thinking. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't, I like, you know, it doesn't matter what it, it doesn't matter if it's food, weed, crazy adventure sport. Like if you're, if you're, if you're doing, if you're either trying to elevate or, or suppress, 
something's off. Mm -hmm. Right. And so finally I was like, you know what, something's off. You know what I mean? I was, I gained like 40 pounds that year. I like just played video games. Like it was going out of style. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. it it, it was not good. And Mm so, you know, eventually I had that moment where I was like, all right, this is enough. And then I went, quit that. And what I did is I went and, you know, I, I, I called every person that I literally had as a connection on LinkedIn set up meetings with them. And within a month I started a new agency and had a quarter million dollars in contract. Dude. And, I, yeah. and that was it. That was that. And that, and so then I built that 2013, 2014 and the 2014, I was like, Oh my God, this agency thing is going to kill me. But I paid an awful lot of debt. So I killed that and, or not, I didn't kill that, but I knew I was like, okay, I, I like, I don't know what to do next, but you know, I need to do something. So then I moved to Toronto to early 2015. And then in May or in April, 2015, someone was like, Hey, can you teach me this online marketing thing? Cause I've been doing it for such a long time at this point. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, nah, I mean, I can't really like that. Yeah, that's not me. And then he's like, yo, like come teach me. And I'm like, fuck, I'm like, I don't want to do that. I, I, I always, I was like, you know, if you teach you you can't do right. Right. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to fail. Like this sucks. And, and so anyways, I went ahead and I had this like little Facebook group, this little dinky ranky Facebook group with like 500 people in it. And I was like, Hey, I'm doing this thing. I had 24 people sign up at $1,300. And I was like, Whoa, I was like, Whoa, that's crazy. That's nuts. And so, um, so I did it again and I had another 24 people. And this time it was like $2,000. And then I just, um, and John knows this, but I was on John Lee Dumas's podcast and I was like, Hey, if you want to get on a call, I'll get on a 15 minute call with you for free. I had 300 people book. Oh, wow. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, eh. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so it's crazy, crazy. I mean, like I was working crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, and then, uh, that led into, you know, my online course business doing 3 million in 2016. And when I went to Toronto, I only had $40,000 in my bank account and still had probably half a million, $600,000 in debt at that point. Hmm. So it wasn't like I had like a ton of, you know, money at this Cash point. Like I didn't have, yeah. I didn't have, in 2016, I barely, I spent like, I think less than $50,000 in ads. It was all partnerships and podcasts. I did over 250 podcasts and I did about 150 joint venture webinars. Hmm. I just hustled. Hustling, man. Yeah. I just get it. You know, I just got, and then that, that led into doing a launch and then, you know, doing a bigger launch. And then 2017, you know, got myself out of most of the debt. And, um, you know, completely repositioned myself and I know we're coming up on time, so I'll, yeah. I'll get to get to the end of this cause, but it's a good, I think it's a good story it's for great, people to realize yeah. how, how quick things can change. So, you know, 2017 happened. Um, and then I was starting to like really going back into those patterns. I was in an open relationship. I was smoking a ton of weed. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, all that type of stuff. Right. So it's kind of like, oh, wow. I'm like back where I was in 2012, but just a little bit different. And so I was like, you know what, you know, I was making three, $400,000 a month at this point. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to blow this up, travel the world and I, you know, I'll figure it out. But I, I just knew that I needed to like, you know, tear apart my life again. Mm-hmm. And I did that. And then three weeks later, um, I met my now wife, uh, here back in, I'm, I'm in Northern California now, but back in Venice beach. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that was the start of, you know, the next thing, which the was 20, 2019, I, you know, I built a $10 million business. That's the biggest business I've built. I've, I helped so many people, but it was all, for the most part, it was all out of ego. It wasn't out of my alignment. It was like, oh, I should do this because I did that last business. So let me do this next thing. Yeah. It's interesting. And, uh, yeah, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, it's interesting because I find that the, the sort of reinvention and like constant reinvention, I I almost feel is actually like a human drive. I think, I think we're all driven to like do something for a certain amount of time. And then after we kind of feel that that's run its course, we're all kind of driven to just start over and do something else. Like I know throughout my career, I've been in the online digital marketing space for 15 years now, but I've run seven different businesses in that 15 years because I just, I feel this constant need to reinvent. And I, and it kind of sounds like... Yeah. What, what you're, what, what, what I realized is that you're just going up the level of like consciousness and your business doesn't associate or align with your current level of consciousness. Hmm. And so when something's not in alignment, we either suppress it or we've got to do something about it. And so, you know, so my next book um, is is going to be about, so there's two I'm working on, but my next book is how to pivot your business, blow up your business or sell your business. 
Mm, I like and that. I've done every single one. I've done every one of those at least five times. And um, so, and, and my, my, the, the premise of the book is, listen, you're out of alignment. I'm going to tell you how to either blow this up, how to pivot it so that you are in alignment or how to package it up so you can sell it. Mm-hmm. And because the honest truth is entrepreneurship is the deepest personal development you'll ever do. And the business you have today probably isn't the business. If you're a real entrepreneur, like a real founder and not a CEO, you're going to have a ton of different businesses in your life. Yep. And it's part of your own personal development process. It's not like, you know, Tim Cook run an apple, punch of numbers, figuring out supply chain, logistics, yeah, that type of thing. You ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah. No, you ain't doing that. Like yeah. if you're listening to this podcast, you ain't doing that. Yep. And, and so I think it's really important for people to realize that like you will, like I've reinvent, reinvented myself every 18 months, probably ever. Mm. Yeah. And I think that you know, some people look at that as like it not being like I've had people all the time being like, I don't want to buy your stuff because, you know, I don't know when you're going to blow it up. You keep like, changing, well, you keep shifting. You keep yeah. changing. I'm like, well, you're not my customer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and that's cool. You know what I mean? And, and, and then the other side of it is, is that every reinvention, I learned so much new. I help so many more new people. I help totally different groups of people. And, you know, it's, re- it's really, really, really fun. And you just kind of, you know, you're bu- in your business and in your life and your relation, everything, you just got to follow your gut, follow your alignment and, um, and, and, and have a lot of fun with that and, um, and, and not take things too seriously and not, mm-hmm. you know, not, not, and also I think a lot of us, we just need to take care of ourselves first. I think a lot of people go out in there. They, a lot of entrepreneurs have the Messiah complex. I want to impact blank, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, they barely can afford to, you know, pay rent. Yeah, take care yeah. of yourself first, man. You gotta, you gotta oxygen take, you mask get, principle. You gotta, you absolutely, you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta take care of your kids. You gotta take care of your family. Then go out and do all the crazy ethic shit that you want to do to impact the world. Damn right. You know, I'm, I'm all about impact. Yeah. You gotta do it at the right time. I love it, man. I, I feel like we could, we really could do like a Joe Rogan style where we go for. No, we could keep, we could go for. Yeah, if it wasn't for another call, I'd, I'd go for. If I didn't have something after this, I'd round I'd three. Call. We'll have to do another down. round then. We'll have to. We'll have to. <laughs> well, make listen, it if, if people if people like it, if people like it, we'll do another round. I don't want to, you we know, do that. <laughs> if no one gets to the end, I don't want to do another one. But if part of this cool. podcast is selfish and we like it, so <laughs> isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Hey Scott, what's the name of that book? Uh, the first one, the soonest one that will come out. Yeah, oh yeah, God. yeah, exactly. I've been tossing around books like they're going <laughs> crazy. Um, so uh, it's called The Nuclear Effect. Uh, if you go to scottolford.com, I don't know when this is going to be aired, but if it's aired after April or, you know, after April, you'll be able to go pre-order that. Nice. Get some really cool bonuses too. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, listen, that, that, that's going to be the book. You want to build a seven-figure plus business? Literally, some of the top people in the world, um, you know, rich over at Agora, Yep. Uh, Top Herman, you know, Tucker Max, uh, you know, uh, uh, who else? Roland Frazier from uh, mm-hmm. Digital Marketer. All those people are like, yo, this is like, and they've actually all read it. And they're nice. like, yo, this book is fucking epic. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited that it turned out that way because I rewrote it three fucking times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, go buy that one. Or, you know, if it's it's available, go pre-order right now. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, keep and, my and hands on that. Drop the name of your upcoming podcast because that's going to be badass. I'm really excited for it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be coming out sometime soon. I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure when, but it's going to be called, it's, it's called In the Future. It's going to be a lot of things we talk about today. Economy, technology, AI how to integrate those things, how to capitalize on those things as an actual entrepreneur, not like, you know, somebody that's got, you know, 20 million bucks in the bank trying to do it. But like, Mm -hmm. you know, people like you and me, how do we capitalize on that? How do we use it? And how do we make it so that we don't, you know, wake up six years from now without a job? Mm -hmm. Love it, man. Mm -hmm. Love it. Well, thanks so much for uh, spending time with us. We're getting you right down to the minute, but uh, (laughs) appreciate you, man. Thanks Thanks, for hanging out. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having you on and uh, talk soon. All All right, right, man. See you. See you. Bye. Hey, 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 thank you for listening to that episode. This is Joe Fear. I'm sure you probably already knew that. And Matt is not here right now, but I'm pretty sure he enjoyed the episode just as much as you and I did because, you know, he went into the production of kind of making that thing right along with me. So thank you very much. And I want to give a quick shout out to our buddies over at Easy Webinar. These guys have been supporting us for a while, a long time. And Casey Zeman is just a super good guy all around. He's actually been on the show before. He's the founder of uh, Easy Webinar. So if you look up Casey Zeman on any podcast platform you're listening to, uh, go check him out. Go check out his backstory, what he's all about. You can learn a 
lot about webinars as well. And right now, you know, Easy Webinar, these guys are actually hooking you up with a great trial. It's a completely free trial to test out their software, soup to nuts, check it all out and see if it's a good fit for you. If you go to easywebinar.com slash hustle, that's H U S. T-L-E, if you didn't know how to spell hustle, there you go. So if you go to easywebinar.com slash hustle, you can go grab a free trial. And Easy Webinar literally lives up to its name. It's super simple, I mean, super easy. And it does all the stuff that you're looking for in any kind of thing with webinars. I mean, they literally cover every single type of webinar you possibly can do. So from live to automated to scheduled at specific times and all these crazy features in between, can't even list them all out. I'll be here way too long. They give you a ton of advanced analytics, what's working, what's not during your webinar based off all these actions. You'll see who attended, how long they stayed, if they clicked the offer or if they didn't. Basically, you're gonna make more money and you're gonna work less with this thing and you're gonna create better relationships with the folks that are listening because it's a good experience. You wanna give that good experience along with some great content, of course, and a killer offer if that's what you got for them. So go try it out yourself. Go check out Easy Webinar dot com slash hustle that's easywebinar.com slash hustle all right all so that is the end of this episode thank you so much for listening to this episode enjoying it hopefully you did i'm pretty sure you did if you lasted this long and go check out easy webinar when you get the chance and we will talk to you next time bye bye thanks everybody for listening to this episode of the hustle and flow chart podcast <laughs> For taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com. Find this episode that you just listened to and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.